Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is Mark Atkinson with the IHA. I uh, just want to let you know we may have a few that will still join us as we get started, uh, but we'll let them come on in. Uh, first of all, good morning or evening, wherever you're joining us from. I want to welcome each of you to the International Business Council webinar. Um, our goal for this webinar is to communicate the various member benefits of joining this group and also describe the various events that, that are hosted by the IBC and specifically how those events can help you grow your international sales. Um, all attendees are currently muted and will remain that way through the webinar, uh, but we do encourage questions to be sent throughout the presentation. So send your questions through the chat function and we'll have a moderator that will be watching those questions and we'll try to help feed those to us so that we can answer those as we progress through the presentation. Uh, we have four presenters joining us today, two including myself as representing the IHA and two representing our IBC Board of Directors. They'll be providing some feedback about their experiences with the various programs that we'll talk about today. Uh, first, to introduce myself, again, I said Mark Atkinson. I'm the Vice President of International at IHA. I've been at IHA for almost two years, but spent many years on the manufacturer brand side um, as an attendee at many of the IBC events and a consumer of the services that we'll talk through today. Um, Lori? I'm Lori Sederic. I am Senior Manager of International here at International Housewares Association. I've been here just shy of 20 years working with our um, International Business Council and um, our International Business Council members and our Board of Directors. We're thankful today to have um, two of our Board of Directors present with us, as Mark had said, and I'll allow them to introduce themselves. Paul, would you like to go first, please? Certainly. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paul Michalowski. I'm Senior Vice President of build Business Development for company Honey Can Do International. In consumer products, we provide storage and organization solutions for uh, both the home and office. We've been in business for the past 11 years. I've been with the organization for 10. I lead the business development team in both domestic and international sales. Now, HCD has been a member of IBC for the past eight years. Our companies attended the Global Forum as well as participated in trade missions that we're going to be talking about for each of those eight years. This fall, it's going to be my fifth Global Forum that I personally uh, have attended. I've also been on five trade missions. And uh, as mentioned, I've been a member of the Board of Directors for the past four years, and I currently hold the position of President of the Board. Mr. Eduardo? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Eduardo Lemus. I am a Senior Account Executive here at Picnic Time Family of Brands. Uh, Picnic Time is a manufacturer of outdoor leisure products, gift and entertaining products. We're based in uh, Moorpark, California. Uh, the company started in 1982, uh, and I've been with this company for 10 years. Um, I handle uh, some of our domestic business, but I'm also in charge of our international sales. Um, uh, I've been participating in the global forums, uh, the IBC program for five years. My first global forum was in Chicago in 2014, and uh, I have returned each year since then. Uh, I participated in three trade missions. Uh, one was to Colombia and Brazil, and one was uh, two were, were to Mexico. Um, this is my third year as a member of the board, and I currently am the program chair. Very good. Thank you both. Really appreciate that, and I'm glad to have you on the call. Uh, so we want to talk first about what is the IBC, and here's the the, the nice positioning statement that's out there, I want to read that to you. The IHA is a special interest group, or IHA International Business Council is a special interest group of IHA members dedicating to helping its membership market and sell their products internationally by sharing information, providing networking opportunities, and offering programs to assist, support, and educate. Okay, so what does that really mean? Well, when this was created many years ago, we realized that international teams typically have a much smaller support staff, if any, Many times it's one person trying to conquer the world. And IBC and its membership program was developed as an external support system to help provide the needed sales support for those small teams that were attempting to sell products globally. Uh, so who's eligible? All IHA regular member companies and, and their employees are available, or excuse me, are eligible. 
uh, we hear from many members that we meet with face to face that they never really realize that these resources are available. We tend to feel like we're screaming it from the highest mountain, but some still hear it as a whisper. So that's what this uh, webinar is all about, is to give you that information and know what's uh, included in the program. There is no cost. It's complimentary as part of your IHA regular membership dues that are paid. And all you have to do is say, I want to join and provide appropriate contacts for the international salespeople in your organization, and you'll start receiving that information. The benefits, we'll describe many of the benefits over the next few slides in detail. But in general, by opting into the IBC, you're going to begin receiving internationally focused communications and notices about the upcoming program events that will help you increase your international sales. Uh, now, Lori's going to discuss some of the key programs and the corresponding benefits to you and your company. As Mark said, we'd like to go through some of the key member benefits to the International Business Council members. Our one um, main mode of communication with our membership is our monthly Global Connect newsletter that goes to our members and is filled with global opportunities, global education, industry news and events. What does that mean? Global opportunities, anything that IHA is presenting to our IBC membership, if we have a trade mission coming up, if we have a global forum coming up, if we have a blog that we want to advertise about the um, something specific that's going on with GDPR and we've written a blog about that, it'll be announced in the Global Connect newsletter. So that is our, our communication tool for global opportunities. Global education, as I mentioned, we have many blogs that are announced in Global Connect that lead our members to our main blog spot where we discuss a certain topic that is relevant to either what's going on with international sales or how to uh, increase international sales. Um, in addition, when we have a um, <clears throat> When we have something specific that comes up in the industry relevant to increasing international sales or something that could impact your international sales negatively and you um, might want to mitigate against something like that, we will have education on those topics. Um, in addition, we announce industry news and events. So if there are trade fairs that International Housewares Association or IBC is doing something specific at, for example, when we have our um, uh, reception at Ambienta in Frankfurt. We will announce the um, invitation in the Global Connect newsletter. If we have trade missions, and as we mentioned, the IBC Global Forum coming up, we'll describe those trade missions or we'll describe the IBC Global Forum in great detail and the speakers and we'll lead you to a blog. So that Global Connect newsletter is our primary um, communication tool with our membership, allowing our members to um, understand what's going on with IBC and what tools are available to them. In addition, um, we always will re announce um, our next benefit, which is our key retailer and distributor reports. We will always announce those in the Global Connect newsletter. So as we have a new report, it's featured in the newsletter and it's linked into the newsletter um, so that our membership can know about those. Key, reg or, pardon me, key retailer and key distributor reports offer introductions to buyers in key global markets. It's a comprehensive but concise information about a retailer or a distributor giving buyer contacts when available or when allowable, and it helps our membership learn more about a retailer or distributor in a specific market before necessarily getting into that market or enhancing what you may already be doing in that market. Um, we have a picture of a UK key retailer report there, and it, it, that's what our cover looks like, and um, it goes through some of the retailers that are featured in that report on the front, and that is a, a, a massively um, important tool to a lot of our International Business Council members. If I could ask Paul to give um, his uh, remarks on the key retailer and key distributor reports, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, Mark and uh, Lori have been indicating, uh, as an IBC member, and I'm going to speak more from the uh, perspective of, of our company, uh, but as a member, we do have access to, as, as they're mentioning, a great deal of information that really has aided us and guided us as a company in developing 
uh, relationships and growing our business globally. Um, the reports, as they're saying, they are available on the IBC website. And as a member of IBC, you get a login to that website. They've just been great tools for us in learning about the markets and many of the retailers within those markets, as Lori was mentioning. Uh, the reports, uh, they help identify who the major retailer players are. Uh, and as Lori indicates, you get general information about them as a company, uh, the number of stores they have, the regions that they cover, their organizational structure, things like class of trade, uh, customer base, demographics, uh, and as mentioned, you know, contacts where available, but equally important to the key retailer reports are the distributor profiles, because those will indicate, you know, if, if you're more likely to enter a marketplace and rather than work direct with a retailer, choose to work through a distributor, uh, the profiles indicate, uh, in many cases, the brands that they carry today, channels they sell into, and certainly retailer customers that they service, uh, pricing strategies and the like. I can tell you from our own experience, I don't you can do, we've used these reports as we've entered markets, uh, including Colombia, Mexico, Australia, and United Kingdom. Uh, you know, when you think about it as a domestic company here in the US, if you want to gain knowledge about a market, it might be easy to just hop in a car or get on a plane and travel to the markets to learn firsthand. Not as easy when you're thinking about an international strategy and IBC makes it easy to get the knowledge even before you make the commitment to travel internationally, which of course can be expensive. And this way you could see if the market aligns with your company strategy for growth. Uh, and I'll tell you the reports are updated on a regular basis so you have accurate and current information as a matter of fact. Uh, we just recently renewed our interest uh, in both Brazil and the United Kingdom. And as you look to the IBC website, reports on both of these markets have just been updated in the last few months, and it includes retailer profiles that hadn't been on a report previously. And now we're looking at uh, new prospect targets uh, within those markets. Great. Thank you so much, Paul, for your feedback on that. We are going to move on to discuss some of the International Business Council benefits at the Inspired Home Show. Um, this is uh, obviously a huge industry event, and there are some specific benefits to our IBC membership during the Inspired Home Show. Um, starting in mid-January, available only to International Business Council members, we provide a pre-show non-US registration list. The list allows you to focus your marketing to a specific group of people or specific customers in a region that you would like to um, showcase your products to at the show. So that starts um, in early to mid-January and allows our membership to take advantage of something that no other IHA members are taking advantage of unless they are also International Business Council members. Um, in addition, at the show, we have a um, reception that International Business Council hosts. It's called Networking After Dark, and it is on the Monday of the show at McCormick Place. So you're on show site, and um, it allows for a lot of networking um, with non-U.S. buyers. And it's a huge party that a lot of the non-U.S. attendees have taken on as something they come to every year, and that's hosted by International Business Council. In addition, we have a specific designation that is a signage um, that states we sell globally, and that is something that we always um, have available for our IBC members to help communicate to buyers that are passing the booth to say, hey, we're, we're familiar with and we want to sell globally to you. Um, in addition, I skipped over this one, um, on our um, Housewares Connect 365, which is our um, year-round show that takes place on our um, website, um, our search tool, there's a special, special designation for International Business Council members. In addition, um, 
post-show non-U.S. registration list is provided to our International Business Council members. Um, Eduardo, would you like to make some comments about your usage of any of those tools associated with the Inspired Home Show? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so, for example, for us, the fact that we get the non-U.S. registration list early in, in the year, uh, we definitely use it. We look at the the markets that we are focused on. We're mainly focusing in Latin America and Canada right now. Um, so we just kind of look. Um, this list is great because it provides uh, the type of uh, business it is. Is it an importer, a, a distributor, a chain? Uh, so it gives you an idea um, plus a contact and a position of, of that contact, a phone number, a website um, and other information for some. Additionally, it tells you the categories that each person buys. So you're, you know, you're. It, it's really valuable. So what I, I, what I do is I use that list to contact and try to uh, make appointments before the show. Um, and then another thing we definitely use is the networking after dark, uh, since this is an event that takes place during the show right after the show um, the show is over um, it's just great you can just walk over there and it, it, it's a great atmosphere uh, allows for uh, to do some networking and uh, you know like you said Lori most of the people there are uh, involved in the international area uh, from the customer side or supplier side so it's just a, a really easy uh, you know spending another couple of hours after the show and have a, a little bit of fun there Great, thank you very much for your feedback, Eduardo. I'd like to also talk about trade missions as one of the key benefits for International Business Council members. Trade missions are IHA's way of taking our members into a market, giving them a very solid introduction to that market. And this, um, during the trade missions, we organize one-on-one -on -one buyer meetings with distributors and retailers. Um, we liken it to speed dating. So the group of IHA suppliers will go into a, a, a market and we, IHA has preset appointments to allow um, our members to meet one-on-one -on -one with the retailers or distributors. Generally, we go to the retailer or distributor's office and they give us a certain amount of time and we split that time between the attendees and um, allow them to meet or re-meet the retailer or distributor with which we're, we're meeting. Um, we take the members on retail tours to visit home and houseware stores so that they have an understanding of what complementary products are in the market and what competing products are already in the market so that they have information on the information, information on um, the retail stores before they meet with the retailers and distributors so that they can have educated conversations when they do have their one-on-one -on -one meetings. And this is a, um, a very um, strong way for our members to get into the market to either begin their um, foray into a market or to expand sales there. We have had numerous companies that have come with us to a um, trade mission for a market or to a market that they already have sales in because they have not necessarily been able to tap into the same retailers or distributors with which IHA has been able to schedule appointments. And um, we've had numerous suppliers that have made a decision to come to a trade mission in a market that they've already attended a trade mission because the appointments and the, um, the setup of the trade mission is so helpful to them, even though they've already been on a trade mission in that market. So that's a key benefit that we, we do like to highlight. Um, it's a small number of people. We usually limit those to 12 companies attending with us to allow proper amount of time, not only for our um, suppliers in attendance, but also um, so that the retailer or distributor isn't overwhelmed by the number of companies participating. Um, Paul, as he mentioned, and Eduardo, as he mentioned, have both been on trade missions and I'd like to solicit some feedback. Paul, if you wouldn't mind starting on your experience with the trade mission. Uh, yeah, thanks, Lori. Uh, as I mentioned, as our uh, company's really been uh, aligned with IBC for the last eight years, uh, the first three years of our business, I can tell you we were focused on 
uh, setting uh, our, our goals and gaining business domestically in the last eight years. Uh, we've participated with IBC in trade missions. I've traveled with uh, IBC uh, areas including Colombia, Brazil, Panama, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, the UK. I can tell you that as a company I mentioned 11 years old, we're now currently doing business in over 20 countries outside the US. And I can also say that many of the partnerships that we've developed and the business that we've gained, it's really a direct result of participating in these trade missions. It's really helped to open our eyes and, and open the door for us uh, with many retailers. I do wanna say that the IHA team uh, does a fantastic job uh, well in advance of the trade mission, researching the market, looking for the relevant retailers and distributors, specifically in housewares categories, um, finding the retail locations that, as Lori says, we can visit in advance of the one-on-one -on -one meetings and then with IHA coordinating the meetings for us. And it's not just with uh, the retailers, but with the buyers. Uh, who manage the lines that we carry. And of course, with the 12 members, as Lori says, we may have on a trip, uh, there could be within all of housewares a number of different categories. So uh, this is also important to those customers we meet with because it's really a chance for them to meet other suppliers outside of their country uh, that otherwise they may not get to see face to face. Um, and it is helpful to visit stores in advance. You know, like Lori says, we get insight into what they're doing today and we can determine uh, and even present how there might be a fit for us with them. So really the time that we spend with the buyers is extremely productive. I'll say equally beneficial to the retail market tours and the meetings is the networking that we have uh, with other suppliers. Uh, they're experienced suppliers, they're like-minded, uh, like us, you know, all of us, the same goal to grow our business globally. And I will tell you with every trade mission I've been on, I have found those suppliers that Lori mentioned who do currently sell in that given market. And they're always willing to share their experiences uh, with us. Um, I'll give you one specific example. We were on a trade mission in South Africa uh, we met with a multi-store retailer who was actually ready to pull the trigger on our line and put it in store. Now, being a U.S.-based company, most of our product, as it turns out, is manufactured in Asia. We keep it all in our warehouse in the U.S. Well, it turns out they weren't large enough to buy containers out of Asia, and they didn't want to wait to get every order out of the U.S., so uh, they suggested that we might want to consider using a distributor. As it turned out, uh, IHA had already scheduled some meetings for us with distributors. And very coincidental to that, one of the other suppliers on that trade mission, who was currently doing business with this retailer in that market, uh, and they were utilizing one of the distributors and they gave us a glowing report on the distributors, so it really became a, a no-brainer for us. And I can tell you over the years with uh, all of the other suppliers I've met on trade missions and at Global Forum, uh, everybody has been very open because again, as I say, we all have the same goal to, uh, to uh, grow our business uh, globally. These trade missions, they prove to be so cost-effective for us as a company to uh, learn firsthand about an international market, you know, gain knowledge, get face-to-face -face contacts. Then, of course, the key is for us to follow up and build from there. Uh, but because it is so cost-effective, it, it also makes it a uh, fairly easy sell, if you will, to a uh, management of the company because there is an expense associated with it, but the payback is certainly worth it. Thank you very much, Paul. Eduardo, you've been on a number of trade missions. Would you like to give some feedback on your experience? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I, I think uh, Paul uh, has really covered it in, in many regards from the uh, experience of having that retail tour before the meetings and uh, really gaining a lot of knowledge and insight about the market 
uh, first hand to connecting with the right buyer that's bu actually buying your stuff um, and the networking with other suppliers like Paul mentioned is very, very, very important. Um, I want to add a couple of other things in this that's that you also get to meet the IHA country manager, um, which is a very, very helpful because they know the market very well as well. And uh, and they, you know, they are very helpful to you. And in, in terms of us, they uh, in Mexico, the country manager Lourdes there has been phenomenal and she's always uh, given us uh, guidance and, and, and insight that, you know, like Paul said, you gain by being at this trip. So um, I, I wanted to say that, plus also you, you get to meet other potential distributors or sales reps during the mission that maybe another supplier has already has a sales rep there and you get to meet other other people that are involved in the market. And I think that's very beneficial for, uh, for us. And, uh, you know, we're focusing uh, in Latin America. So I've also gone to a, a trade mission in Colombia and Brazil and, um, you know, I think that if anything, you you are gaining the direct connect to the buyers, to the to the retailers, and um, you know, if you uh, decide that you don't want to go on another trade mission to that same market, you can do so. In our case, we've gone to two trade missions to Mexico because just the way the the whole uh, program is set up is so neat, and and the time and and it just sometimes you can't get an appointment with the buyers um, so easily. So, you know, doing the trade mission is just, uh, it works out. Great. Thank you so much, Eduardo. Appreciate your feedback on that. We're going to move on to some of the other benefits of International Business Council. Um, within International Business Council, <clears throat> once you um, have joined International Business Council, or if you have already joined, you will have credentials that we will provide to you that will allow you access to our member portal. Contained in the member portal are any items that are on IHA's website that aren't for public view, such as those key retailer and key distributor reports that we just discussed. In addition to that, we house our special reports under the um, uh, IBC member portal, including um, special reports on country, specific information as it relates to the home and housewares industry in a specific country, um, um, market reports on different markets, and then regulatory reports on anything that might be going on specific to international sales that would impact housewares. Um, in addition to that, upon request, we have an ability to liaise a IBC member with an IBC board member or seasoned exporter and um, we would continue to do this for anyone who would like to find a mentor within IBC. So that's something that um, allows one of our newer members to speak one-on-one -on -one with one of our board members or someone who has been exporting for a long time that has been involved in International Business Council. I'm going to move to the next slide, and we are going to discuss the International Business Council um, Global Forum. The Global Forum is the pinnacle of the IBC membership year. This is our annual meeting. Um, it's an educational and networking event that allows our members to um, liaise with buyers and liaise with like-minded sellers um, at the International Business Council. Um, Global Forum held September 15th through 17th in San Diego, California this year. Um, we will have many of International Housewares Association global offices and representatives, and that's a major benefit to our membership. Um, there are approximately um, 28 markets that will be represented by those offices and representatives who will be there, and that's just a major tool for our members to be able to utilize um, during the International Business Council's Global Forum. Um, International Business Council Global Forum is educational and networking event. And um, currently we have many speakers um, confirmed. We have Eddington's, uh, which is a distributor out of the United Kingdom that will be speaking on the market in the UK and how to do business with a distributor such as Eddington's. And then the speaker from Eddington's would be present during the entire global forum to network with for the suppliers. 
uh, we have City Social. It's a um, online sales um, uh, portal uh, with business in Taiwan, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. And again, the speaker from City Social, who is a potential business partner, would be available during the entire global forum. And then a Spanish um, retailer called Culinarium that will be at the Global Forum speaking as well. In addition, we have a component to the um, Global Forum, which is um, an executive education session. It's a workshop, and it will be presented by Thunderbird School of Global Management. Dr. Patrick Lynch will be speaking on um, utilizing um, influential utilizing influencers on a global level to help with your sales outside the U.S. And as we announce more speakers, they will be announced within the International Business Council's um, uh, newsletter. So our, our members will hear of our um, speakers as soon as more are confirmed. Uh, Paul and Eduardo have both been to numerous global forums, and I would like to ask if they could speak. Eduardo, would you share some insights from having sure, attended? Thank yeah, you. definitely. Um, so, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the, the Global Forum is, is just, like you said, it's the, the pinnacle where you, you have a ton of people who are all involved in international sales, international marketing, and, and the, the forum um, provides uh, you know, the main things are the uh, networking benefits and the educational benefits. So the educational benefits, um, last year, for example, we learned um, from from the professor uh, basically uh, seven things that you can dine, uh, create a diagnostic for your company in case you want, you're trying to venture into a new market and these tools allow you to see if how prone you are to succeed or not and it was kind of an eye-opener for us because we had uh, venture into the European market just a few years prior and it was not a successful venture for us so uh, you know being at that meeting last year and learning this tool um, it, it really opened my eyes because it was something that we could we could have used or now we can use uh, that is just very very uh, important to do um, it's something that you that you need to do so this is the kind of information that you get at this global forum and every year has been uh, at the same scale uh, the other thing that I find very beneficial is the networking um, the global forum has always been done very well from the very beginning uh, the welcome reception through um, and also throughout the event I've always had the opportunity to introduce myself, to meet other people, and uh, and learn um, what they do, and just you know start a relationship. That, like um, Paul was mentioning earlier, um, this event is our events are so open that uh, you just feel comfortable uh, interacting with each other and 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 supporting each other. So I think overall, um, from meeting a lot of my peers. Uh, on the supplier side and also the buyers that are invited to the event, um, it just creates a, 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 a positive outcome every time. So we've we've gone to this event every every year, and I find it to be like the the best uh, event of the year for us in in terms of uh, our international networking, international marketing. Thank you, Eduardo. Paul, could you share some feedback on your attendance to the Global Forum? Yeah, I, I'm happy to. Uh, first, I want to echo the remarks that uh, Eduardo made. And Global Forum is really important for us as an organization as we look to continue to grow our business in, in the global market. Um, and as I mentioned, we participate in Global Forum every year uh, for the last eight years. And certainly a focus for us is always learning. Whether it's from the retailers or distributors who make presentations to learn more about their market uh, and, and steps that we may take and things that we have to consider in getting into that market, which can be completely different than anything we've experienced here domestically. But to add to it, the uh, educational seminars from uh, Thunderbird, uh, as Eduardo mentioned even last year, we, I will tell you, had a similar situation moving into Europe, uh, we got in there early. We thought we'd just 
take a, a stab at it, much like we do domestically, and put some product in the European market and and see what would happen. And uh, first time around, it wasn't as successful. And even to Eduardo's point, when I listened to the presentation last year that talked about topics to consider when entering the market, uh, I wish we had heard that uh, presentation before we went into Europe. We would have been uh, a lot smarter about it. Um, two years ago, there was a, a session on international negotiating strategies. I think it's really important at the Global Forum, uh, particularly for those that may be there for the first time, for suppliers that may just be considering entering the global market and may not have any experience at all. The event really starts on the first evening uh, with a presentation to, uh, uh, called Export 101. And it really gets into uh, strategies for building an international business plan. It talks about things to consider uh, in terms of compliance uh, that may be different than you find here domestically with, with customers, the mechanics for exporting, uh, how you might market different in an in international market, uh, pricing strategies, different supply chains to consider, and even product selection. Uh, of course, what sells well here for you domestically may not be the case internationally. So just a vast amount of knowledge that you can gain and, and I will say too, that if you're not currently selling into the international market, if you're just exploring the opportunity, the global forum is really the first place to begin uh, your journey and just learn more. Uh, as you know, we say from the speakers that are gonna be presenting, but also such a key component to this and been a benefit to, uh, to us has been the networking uh, with all the other IBC members. It's really been very rewarding, and, and I will tell you, as I, as I mentioned earlier, I think it's really helped us in establishing uh, strong business relationships uh, and uh, significant business uh, throughout the, uh, uh, the global market. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, obviously, as we've talked about, the Global Forum um, is a great stepping off point for a new IBC member, even if you're already doing international business. Global Forum offers access to our membership who are very open to sharing what they're doing internationally. It offers access to networking and it offers access to the speakers who are present during the Global Forum that represent <clears throat> non-US sales opportunities to the attendees. So thank you both for your remarks on, on the Global Forum. Um, I do want to share with you now some links that are integral to getting involved with International Business Council. We have um, the Learn More link. We also have the um, Global Forum registration link. And um, my information, if you have questions, um, please get in contact with me. I spend probably 30% of my time talking to our membership. Um, we always say this, we might not have the information, but we know somebody who does. So we can help to liaise you with the appropriate person who might have information within our network. I would like to also let you know that after the webinar, we do plan to email the slides to the attendees. So you'll have that um, access as well. Um, Lori, I have a quick question that came through. Thank you. How would you describe a member who derives the most benefit from IBC? That's a great question, whoever asked. Um, a, a, a member that is truly engaged, they're reading the newsletter, they're attending the Global Forum, they're looking through the reports that we include in the newsletter, they're reading through the blogs, and they're truly educating themselves and getting involved in the activities that we offer for them. Um, if you get a newsletter and you don't read it, well, then it, it goes in your trash. If you read it and get engaged and um, you take advantage of the opportunities that we're offering to our membership, that's an engaged, um, educated IBC member. And, it, and I would add that it could also be of any size. You know, I think th there's some larger companies that are members of our overall association that are really surprised about the information that's available through the IBC program. Um, and we speak to them regularly and, 
and even for them, the information that's provided is very valuable. Obviously, if you're starting out and you're a younger organization or a smaller organization, uh, this, this information could be critical, especially when you look at the buyer reports, the distributor reports, the ways to enter those markets. You know, I think size of company, both big and small, can benefit from this program if, as Lori said, you're engaged and you're reading through the materials and you're asking us questions, you're reaching out. Those are ways to really benefit from the program elements. Okay. Uh, no other questions then. I want to reach out to everybody or say to everyone, thank you all for attending and certainly encourage each of you to join the IBC. Again, it's free. It's easy to join. We just need some contact information from you. I also want to thank uh, Eduardo and Paul for taking the time out of the busy day to give us their extremely valuable feedback and how uh, these programs have benefited them and their company. Um, this concludes the webinar, and we hope you all have a great day or evening, depending on where you logged in from in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.